You just got home after a long highway drive. Your diesel felt strong, smooth, and powerful the whole way. You pull into your driveway, shift into park, and without thinking, you turn the key and shut the engine off. And right there, in less than one second, you may have just started damaging one of the most expensive parts of your engine. It doesn't feel wrong. It doesn't sound wrong. It doesn't cost you anything right now. But over time, this small habit slowly eats away at a part that can cost $1,000 to $3,000 to replace. And the worst part is, almost every diesel owner does this several times a week without even realizing it. It's so automatic that you probably never gave it a second thought. But here's something interesting. Diesel mechanics who rebuild turbos for a living, they don't do this. Fleet managers who need trucks to last 400,000 or even 500,000 miles, they train their drivers very carefully to avoid it. There's a reason for that. If you stick with me, I'll show you the exact shutdown habit experience diesel drivers use. It takes less than two minutes, costs almost nothing, and can add years to the life of your turbocharger. So what is this expensive mistake? It's painfully simple. Shutting your engine off immediately after a long highway drive or heavy work. That's it. Now, if you're like most diesel owners, you're probably thinking, modern turbos are water-cooled. This isn't an issue anymore. And you're not completely wrong. Most newer diesel turbos do have water cooling systems built into them. These systems help control heat and protect the turbo after shutdown. But here's the part most people don't understand. Water cooling helps, but it does not solve the whole problem especially when it comes to what happens to the oil inside your turbo. To understand why this matters, we need to look at what your turbo goes through while you're driving on the highway. When you're cruising at highway speeds, especially if you're towing, climbing hills, or carrying weight, your turbo is working extremely hard. It spins at speeds that are honestly hard to imagine. We're talking 80,000 to 150,000 revolutions per minute. Some modern turbos can spin even faster than that under heavy load. At those speeds, heat builds up fast. The exhaust side of the turbo, which is driven by hot exhaust gases, can reach temperatures well over 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. That heat travels straight into the center of the turbo where the bearings live. Those bearings depend on engine oil for two things, lubrication and cooling. As long as the engine is running, oil is flowing through the turbo, carrying heat away and keeping everything protected. But the moment you shut the engine off, that oil flow stops instantly. The turbo itself is still extremely hot. All that leftover heat has nowhere to go. And this is where the damage begins. Slowly, quietly, and invisibly. The oil that's trapped inside the turbo doesn't move anymore. It just sits there, soaking up heat. That heat cooks the oil, breaking it down and turning it into hard carbon deposits over time. This process doesn't destroy your turbo in one day. It doesn't even destroy it in one week. But repeated over months and years, it slowly clogs oil passages, damages bearings, and shortens the life of the turbo until one day, it fails. And when that happens, the repair bill hits hard. So let's talk about what's really happening inside your turbo after you shut the engine off too fast. When you turn the key and the engine stops, oil flow stops immediately. There's no gradual slowdown. One second the oil is flowing, the next second it's not but the turbo doesn't suddenly cool down just because the engine is off. The exhaust side of the turbo is still extremely hot. That heat moves inward toward the center housing where the bearings and oil passages are located. This leftover heat is called heat soak and it's the real enemy here. Without fresh oil flowing through the turbo, the oil that's trapped inside starts to overheat. When oil gets too hot, it breaks down. Instead of staying smooth and slippery, it thickens, burns, and leaves behind hard carbon residue. Over time, this residue builds up. These carbon deposits slowly coat the bearings and narrow the oil passages. Less oil gets through, less cooling happens. Wear increases. The turbo starts aging much faster than it should. Now let's clear up an important misunderstanding. Yes, most modern turbos are water-cooled. After you shut the engine off, coolant may continue circulating for a short time. This helps lower the temperature of the turbo housing. But water cooling only does part of the job. It cools the metal housing, not the oil that's stuck inside the bearing area. The oil is still exposed to very high heat, and without movement, it continues to cook. That's why even water-cooled turbos can still suffer from oil coking and bearing damage. If this happens once in a while, it's not a big deal. But if you shut your engine off immediately after highway driving several times a week, every week, month after month, 
The damage adds up. At first, you won't notice anything wrong. Then one day, you might notice your engine using a little more oil than usual. And you may hear a faint whining sound when the turbo spools up. Throttle response might feel slightly weaker. In some cases, you'll see a bit of blue smoke from the exhaust. By the time these signs become obvious, the damage is already done. At that point, you're usually looking at a turbo replacement. And depending on the truck, that can cost anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000, sometimes even more with labor. And here's the frustrating part. Most of these failures were completely avoidable. All of them caused by a habit that feels totally normal and harmless. The fix is so simple that most people are shocked when they hear it. After a long highway drive, especially if you've been towing, hauling, or climbing hills, let your diesel idle for one to two minutes before shutting it off. That's it. Just 60 to 120 seconds. Those two minutes allow several important things to happen at the same time. First, the turbo begins to slow down gradually instead of stopping suddenly. Second, oil continues flowing through the bearings, carrying heat away. Third, temperatures inside the turbo start to settle back to safer levels. That small window of time prevents the oil from cooking and forming deposits. For normal highway driving with light load, one minute is usually enough. If you've been towing heavy, driving hard, or pulling long grades, two minutes is the safer choice. Some newer diesel trucks actually do this for you. They have built-in systems that keep the engine running for a short time, even after you turn the key off. But most diesels don't have this feature. So if your truck doesn't do it automatically, you need to do it yourself. Turbo manufacturers still recommend cool-down periods in their own technical documents, even for modern, water-cooled designs. And diesel mechanics who tear apart failed turbos all say the same thing. Most turbo failures are preventable. Now let's talk about the real-world side of this, because a lot of people hear idle for one to two minutes and immediately think it sounds inconvenient or wasteful. In reality, it costs you almost nothing. Idling your diesel for one to two minutes uses just a tiny amount of fuel. We're talking a few cents, usually three to five cents worth of diesel per cooldown. That's it. Now compare that to replacing a turbo. Once you factor in parts and labor, most turbo replacements land somewhere between $1,500 and $3,000, sometimes more, depending on the truck. So you're trading a few cents now to avoid a massive bill later. That's a deal every smart diesel owner should take. But here's an important point many people miss. You don't need to do this after every single drive. If you're just running to the grocery store, driving around town, or making short trips, you can shut the engine off right away. In those situations, the turbo never gets hot enough to cause the kind of heat stress we're talking about. This cool-down habit is meant for specific situations. Long highway drives, towing trailers or heavy loads, driving in the mountains, sustained high speeds or hard acceleration, a good rule of thumb is this. If you've been driving at highway speed for 10 to 15 minutes or more, especially under load, give the turbo a cool down. Now here's a tip that experienced drivers use to make this even more effective. And during the first 30 to 45 seconds of your cool down, keep the engine at a slightly higher idle than normal. This helps push fresh oil through the turbo right when temperatures are highest. After that, let it settle back to normal idle for the rest of the time. You don't need to rev the engine hard. Just a small increase in idle is enough. There's also another method that many professional drivers prefer, and honestly, it feels more natural. Instead of sitting in your driveway idling, you can start the cool down while you're still driving. Now, if you know you're about five to 10 minutes from home, begin easing off, reduce your speed, keep RPMs low, and avoid heavy throttle. Drive gently through your neighborhood, no hard acceleration. This lets the turbo slow down and cool off while oil is still flowing. By the time you pull into your driveway, the turbo is already much cooler. In that case, you may only need a few seconds of idle before shutting down. Fleet drivers use this method all the time because it fits smoothly into normal driving. If your truck has an exhaust temperature gauge, or EGT gauge, you can use it as a guide. Once exhaust temps drop below 300 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, it's generally safe to shut the engine off. The key idea is simple. Don't go from hard work to instant shutdown. Give the turbo time to relax. This one habit alone can dramatically extend the life of your turbocharger. Now let's clear up a few common worries that usually come up once people learn this. The first question is almost always, what if I forget sometimes? Don't panic. <laughs> Missing a cool down once in a while will not destroy your turbo. The damage we're talking about is cumulative, not instant. It builds slowly over time. 
Think of it like skipping an oil change. Doing it once won't kill the engine. Doing it over and over for years will. The goal here isn't perfection. If you remember to cool down your turbo 70 to 80% of the time, you're already way ahead of most diesel owners. Even that level of consistency can add a huge amount of life to your turbo. Another concern people have is time. But realistically, those one or two minutes usually go by faster than you expect. Use that time to gather your things, check your phone, set up your next destination, or just take a breath before heading inside. That short pause can save you thousands of dollars later. Here's the bottom line. Your turbocharger works in extreme conditions. It spins at insane speeds and deals with brutal heat every time you drive on the highway or pull a load. Even with modern water cooling, it still depends on proper oil flow to survive. When you shut the engine off too fast after hard driving, you cut that protection instantly. But when you give it just a little time to cool down, one to two minutes, you protect the bearings, prevent oil from cooking, and slow down wear that would otherwise shorten its life. This is why professional drivers do it. This is why fleet managers require it. This is why diesel mechanics recommend it. The only people not doing it are the ones who haven't learned about it yet. So start today. The next time you finish a highway drive, resist the urge to shut off right away. Let your diesel idle for about 90 seconds. Make it part of your routine. Your turbo will thank you with quieter operation, better performance, and years of reliable service instead of an early expensive failure. And if you've ever had a turbo fail before, you now know why it probably happened. If this helped you understand your diesel better and potentially saved you thousands in repairs, show your support. And if you have diesel-related questions or topics you want covered, share them. Your diesel is built to work hard. With a little care, it can outlast most vehicles on the road. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I truly appreciate it. Until next time, keep those diesels running strong.